All right, we can see what you're doing. Or I'm live. We are live. I just said I was getting indigestion from those beans. Oh, it wasn't live then, but it is now. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm finishing up. These are the chairs that we painted on the live on Monday. I'm finally getting around. I finally got them distressed and sealed today. I've got three of them upholstered, and I'm upholstering the last one, and then I will hot glue the trim on. I'm going to give you the chat that way because uh, I'm going to be doing the stain. Zeb is. Uh, I was set the... up and then I forgot a part, so I'll be right back, guys. Zeb's gonna be. Are you staining or are you painting? I'm doing this top on the table and then oh. I'll paint the bottom. Well, where's I don't know the steel wool and vinegar? I got it right here. So while Zeb's gone, um, hey Jacob. Uh, Zeb is going to be staining this table that he just built today. He started turning the legs last night and then worked on it off and on all, pretty much all day, but intermittent between a few things I needed. And he got this table all finished. It's a seven foot. Here, I'll show you. Yeah. Now, I already have some made, like with the steel wool in the thing. I didn't want to use your old busted steel wool in the thing one. Okay. Um, <laughs> this farm table is seven Here, foot Here, I'll show you. Just over 30 inches. How wide is it? 31? Uh, yeah, it's 31. Which makes it super handy because you can just drag it in and out of houses without having to well, take the legs off or anything now like that. We decided that. to not go with chunky legs, but the leg design is really ornate, which I like. So the leg design being small also allows us to go with a narrower table because if you go with the big chunky legs, you can't get a chair in between them. Little He's, wife life says so many things going on. There's a lot of stuff going on right yeah. now. <laughs> in this living room. This is crunch time. And this is only what you can see in here. So we finished. You can see this bench is finished. I went. It's cream. It's like a super chippy milk paint cream. And then we stained the seat dark. The big cabinets all finished in distress. Zeb just has to seal it. Um, oh, these are all done. Yeah, and they're almost done. This table's done. We we were gonna build another bench and we decided not to. And there's a hutch in the garage that just needs to be uh the glass clean and that's so some people say you gotta wait and put the steel wool in you there do. and activate it check this out you do if you're not doing cedar if oh, you're doing gotcha. pine you need to let the steel wool soak for a couple of days oh yeah pine that. i never have a good effect on pine though. but if you're using it on this um cedar it is really pretty much instant the steel wool and vinegar will instantly all right check this out you guys are going to watch this live Hello from snowy Minnesota. Uh, we got snow on the mountains, not in the valley yet. We were supposed to have snow here, but then it didn't snow. It did like this light, weird spritzing thing and just froze hard last night. Yeah. My phone said it was 25 degrees this morning. I told Zeb it was time to move to Southern California. <laughs> She's always pushing that move to Southern California. Hey, it's, the weather's great. No snow. There's a beach. You guys get to see like the bottom half of my body. <laughs> well, what do they see of me? My head? Yeah, they got your head. I the furniture is taking over the house, so this is this is what you guys get. Sorry. Somebody says, <laughs> here, I'll oh, drop in and say, hey. Caitlin said it snowed, but it didn't stick. It didn't snow here as far as I know. You guys get more snow down there, Norm. Norm. Caitlin's, Caitlin's on. She's my uh, handy dandy assistant. She's pretty awesome. <clears throat> You don't have a Caitlin in your life, you should. She handles stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna be done staining this in like three seconds. Uh, sorry, I'm not really talking. I gotta get this upholstery done. If you guys have seen, I've actually done chairs like this. Um, I have a DIY on Queen Anne chairs, and that's basically what this, I mean, it's not a Queen Anne style, but it's the same thing. Apparently, Jacob and Monica are having a conversation on a live. I don't know what they're saying because it's in Spanish. <laughs> In Spanish. All right, Deb, you're gonna have to talk to him. All right, I'm gonna get loud. Uh, we really have a ton to say. We don't. We don't plan on going live tomorrow. We're gonna be doing all the smalls, which might actually be fun to watch. But yeah, but it's crunch time. We don't. We don't have the time. I don't think we've got. To pick Mariah up from the airport. She's getting picked up tomorrow at 2:30, and. Kids were picked up at the same time. Harrington has his uh, semifinals playoffs at the U. Oh, it's not 
Spanish is Portuguese. Sorry. Portuguese, Spanish. It, it looks it looks, it looks about the, the same. same when you're tired. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. So when this finally takes on this uh, this vinegar, once it dries, I'm gonna go back over with the white pickling that you guys have seen us do. Are we gonna pickle it? I thought we were gonna pickle it. It's gonna be super dark gray if we don't. I wasn't planning on pickling it. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. I don't like, I didn't wanna do it like a pickle, maybe a white wash. Okay. The pickling was really severe. I was on board with the picture. All right, so I've got a cover, pretty good coverage on this whole table. And now we just let it sit. As that vinegar dries, it'll turn gray. Did y'all catch that? <laughs> Sorry, Jamie's, she keeps cutting in on my, my what I got going yeah, on. Yeah, so that. that table is gonna turn gray. So when you're not, this is Spanish cedar, and you don't have to let the steel wool soak, but if you're gonna use steel wool and vinegar on like a regular pine or an oak, Letting it soak overnight is going to give you a better result. Oh, Kaylin says they could hear you. Oh, good. Awesome. Way to go, iPhone 7. Oh, you know what's bad, though? You can see all the putty. That's why I was going to pickle it. Oh, you're going to have to pickle it. Because I, I had some kind of, this is, this is kind of remnants left over from some of the stuff my dad brought. And so it had some weird stuff going on, so I really had to staple it down. Why didn't you just use the sawdust and glue method to fill those? Because it's a lot easier and faster <laughs> to use the uh, plastic one. All right, what color are we painting that base? I'll start painting. Um, do we have any white swan? Uh-huh, sure. Stop looking at me, swan. What movie is that from? Billy Madison. I knew you would know what movie that was from. We don't have any white. We're all out of all white. Uh, um, we don't have a... I thought we had a pint, no? Nope. Mm. Um, all right. Yeah, there's like a half a pint. It should be enough. That's enough to do that. I have some more in the office. Okay. I need it too. Any questions? Or is it a slow I night for the questions? I, don't, I didn't see any questions. Hold on. Your phone died. Or being closed out. Sorry guys, Zeb's. Unstoppable Gaming says hi. So Zeb's gonna be using the DIY paint in White Swan. He's already stained the legs Jacobian, so they're, they're like a dark brown. And he's going to be um, painting them white and distressing them. Let's see, I don't even know. How much will we sell the bench for? We don't know yet. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hide Jamie a little. I guess I'm you sorry, can. I'm just I'm just over here upholstering. It's, really it's not exciting. Normally we do this in two parts, like we'll spray the base and then throw the top on there. But I was in such a hurry, I just I just put it all together. Well, it was cold today, and I was in a hurry to get out of that cold. You guys got to keep us going tonight. Hit us up with some questions. Anything you want to know about? Any specifics about the show? The market coming up on Lily Saturday? Says, so awesome teamwork. Shelly says, love the chairs. Thank you. This fabric that I'm using, well, I don't know if you can even see it now that you moved it. It's from Hobby Lobby. Stuck cloth. And there you guys are kind of um, way Tara, over there. Tara says she's loving it already. I don't know if she means the bench or... The table. the table. Tara is from Utah. She's a friend of mine. Who's picking you up? Mariah, I don't know. We're gonna, we both want to pick you up, so we're gonna have to Rochambeau. Paper, rock, scissors to see who gets to pick you up. It'll probably be Jamie. I'll get stuck here picking the kids up from school. Yeah, because you're always the one that picks them up. I, pick them up <laughs> I make you take them because it's cold. Yeah, she, Jamie makes me take the kids in the morning when the car is not warm up and it needs to get scraped off of it. Um, it'll probably be me because that's going to be building smalls tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to be doing, um, 
like uh, oh, small little Tara toads. Tara says she's loving the bench. Yeah, tomorrow we're doing toads. Hold on a second. Jacob wants to know if we turn the legs. Yes, Jacob said turn the legs. We don't buy table legs. And then... They're at a cheap Home Depot pine. They didn't turn out very good, but we're going to give them a real rustic, rough distress. Tara Noble says bench. That's what she's loving already. Thank you. Well, the bench is done. Yeah, that bench is, that's it. That's what it looks like. It's chippy and sealed. We and might put some Christmas pillows on it. Yeah, that's where Mariah comes in. I'm hoping she can sew some cloth napkins and turn them into pillows. I, funny story, I was trying to buy um, paper, Christmas paper napkins so I could do like some sort of craft with them. And when they came from Amazon, they were not paper, they were cloth. Apparently I didn't read the description. Uh, do that, do that, do that. Oh, Jacob says they could have been salvaged. This is true. They, they, they could have been salvaged, but they're not. And then Willie wants to know where our kids are. Eliza's sitting right here. Eliza, why don't you come around here over here by me and say hi? You're supposed to be in bed. Say hi and go to bed. Jack and Redrick are asleep. We usually put Jack and Redrick down about 7 o'clock. Oh. Um, Redrick doesn't usually get too happy about that, but he wakes up early in the morning and he's grumpy by then, so he gets to go to bed. Uh, no, hold on just a second. I'm, I've lost my train of thought. Uh, how many ounces is a sample? So a fairy chalk mother is four ounces, and DIY, their paint sample is eight ounces. And then Tara wants to know if she can come work my booth. If you want to. <laughs> Nine to five. Just come to the front, find Caitlin or Megan, and tell them you're with me. And then come find me, I'll be the crazy lady. I'm teaching, I'm running the show, and I have a double booth. But this time I have Caitlin and my sister-in-law Mariah on top of Megan and Alex, so I've got a ton of help, which is great. Somebody says, I wish my kids went to bed by then. So Jack it's, wakes it's up. It's not willingly. Jack, well, Jack wakes <laughs> up at like 6.30, and he's three years old, and he doesn't nap. So by 7 o'clock, he's pretty tired, and I have to lay down with him, and usually I rub his back and sing him a few songs, and then he falls asleep. And tonight it was more like 7.45, and Roderick's bedtime is 8, so I just told Roderick, they have bunk beds, so I just told Roderick to be in there with him. And then the, the teenager and the almost teenager are downstairs listening to their radios reading books. We're really lame parents. Our kids don't have any electronics or anything like that. They have clock radios, so if you go downstairs, you're going to find our kids <laughs> listening to their clock radios and reading because that's what they do at night because there's nothing else to do around Heron's here. Heron's sleeping. Oh, Heron's yeah. sleeping. He had football and then he's got to get up early for seminary, which is like Bible study. He's got to get up at like 6 o'clock, 5.50, and then he has his the varsity semifinals at the University of Utah at their stadium tomorrow, so he's got to get rested up. So he's a better man. Okay, let's see. All right, I'm going to bring you guys in close so you can kind of see what the base of this table is going to look like. Let's see if I can not turn the camera off this time like I usually do. All right. Okay, so this is the one side. I'm kind of just randomly painting and then decided to come over. But once we distress it, I kind of just dry brushed right here. And that's probably what the that's probably pretty close to what the finished look will look like. We'll we'll distress it pretty heavy and it'll be about like that there. And I don't know if you can see it, it's starting to go a little dark as it dries out here. It's not completely, it's still got some of the reddish going on, but you can see around the knots where there's lots of oil in the wood, it's starting to take. Somebody said, Do you have any advice for people that want to start refurbished furniture? That is Misfit Zombie Chick. We actually have a video called How to Make Money Flipping Furniture. Yep. It's probably the, a good place to start. That video has lots of good information. Um, Russ says they have three education, so be it. Um, from How's Jersey. that look? Lily says she loves the Spanish cedar. Yeah, you got a good, you have good angle there. Okay. How does it change the wood color? It's like scientific. I don't know. It weathers the wood. Like a cycle project. I honestly don't know what the uh, exact process is. How about is. you Google it, Caitlin, and then you let us know. <laughs> <laughs> um, All I know is that somebody told me it would a while back, and so I tried it, and it did, and now we use it all the time. Yeah, like, it was an art. Um, Tara says that her, she only gives her kids electronics on the weekends. That helps me go in. We have, like, my little boys have Kindles, but they don't really play them very often. 
And we do have TV, like we have a TV in our room and we have a TV in the basement, but the kids wouldn't stay off the TV in the basement, so we unhook the PS4. So there, the only TV besides the one in our bedroom that you can watch TV on is in the little boys' room. So when they go to bed, nobody can watch TV. <laughs> oh, Kaylin says she'll make a blog post, take some pictures for her. Okay. Andrea says that how to make money video is fantastic. Funny thing about that how to make money video, I'm not really working. I'm tired. I'm just going to sit here and chat with you guys. Um, is that one day Zeb's like, what video should we make? And I had, I was feeling kind of saucy. Oh, she was super saucy. All those were like one take. And Zeb, I didn't so have I to said, hardly well, edit it just, at all. I'm like, people are always asking me how to make money. I'm like, how about I just be real and make a video? So I sit, literally sat in that chair and Zeb just took a bunch of shots from different angles and there wasn't a lot of editing. I was just like, here's a bunch of ways to make money and I just said exactly what I was thinking and it actually turned out pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's one of our better videos right now. Yeah, it's doing well. Lots of people are watching it and I feel like it answers a lot of questions. I do want to do some more videos on like the social media aspect, although I wouldn't say I'm a pro, but just what I do to help grow my social media because I get asked a lot and it's easier if I have a video because then I can just give people a link and it's got their information. Then we just have to tell people one or two times instead of like every 10, 10, 10 times a day. Um, sort of Mindful says the tabletop looks great. Does it react differently on different wood? Yeah. Absolutely. So this Spanish cedar gets like very dark gray and it's stinking amazing. But Spanish cedar is a very expensive hardwood. We are lucky. Uh, I'd say it's like a medium wood. It's not hard. Well, not hardwood, but it's a very expensive wood. Yeah. You can't just go and buy this at Home Depot. We are yeah. lucky that my father-in-law sources, sources or sourced, I don't know, he sourced us some Spanish cedar and um, brought it to us. I would say he kind of milled it, like he cut it into No, pieces. he mills it. It's for he sure mi He milled milled. it, but then Zeb has to, like, it doesn't come to us. I have like, to do what we call processing it and make it flat like this. Yeah. When the, when the wood comes from Zeb's dad, it isn't like the wood you buy at like, it's, it's, the lumber. It's yard. like raw lumber. Like, it's got some whoops. and I left some of the saw marks in here, but I flattened a lot of them out. But I love the way the saw marks look in, in the wood, so I left them. Yeah, Zeb processes it and makes it smoother. But anyways, yeah, so this one gets dark gray. Oak is going to be like a light gray. Pine probably is the least reactive. If yeah. you're going to do pine, which you, if you watched my... Um, I was Naughty pine reacts pretty good, but like your white fur and your Douglas fur, they don't do much at all. Well, I did Studio 5. I did a segment. It's on my that blog. right over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll show you guys what pine looks like. But I did a segment where I used milk paint and then the reactive stain, and that worked pretty good. Go up close and show them. So if you guys go to jamierayvintage.com, I have a blog, and on my blog, I have the video for the TV segment I did on Studio 5. And this is what um, this reactive stain does on, see Douglas fur? Reactive stain. Caitlin, thank you. They're from Brown Paper Boutique. Anyway, so this is what pine does with it. So every different wood will react differently. But yeah, if you guys go to my blog and look up my Studio 5 segment, I think the picture is like a little white nightstand in this piece. It'll show in there, I show what it looks like on oak, what it looks like on pine, and then what it looks like on cedar. We also have a video, um, it's the vinegar stain one. Yeah, but we're, yeah, but that's done on the Spanish cedar. Yeah, too. it's done on the Spanish cedar, it's cheating, because the Spanish cedar is really The Spanish amazing. cedar is gorgeous, it looks the best. Uh, You're on my side. I'm sorry. I've got to get this side of the yeah, table. Yeah, it will be a great holiday table. This is seven feet long, and I pushed the legs out. So you can fit three big chairs in between. So it'll seat eight, even though it's, like, long and narrow. Um, if you had a bench, you could sit, like, a million little yeah, kids on it. It's, it's, uh, it, it's deceiving because it looks small because it's narrow, but it's a nice long table. Well, it's good. Like, we have a narrow farm table, and so we can fit, like, a big, long farm table in our kitchen, even though it's not big. I love it because, man, it's super easy to move in and out of houses. You don't have to tip it on its side or take the legs out. You just carry it on in. <clears throat> did you sign that back in? Yeah, I did. Let's see. And, oh, that's it. Nobody else has said anything else? All right, well, 
I'm just going to snip this back here. I'll, we'll probably stay live a little while longer so you guys can see what happens to this cedar. It's, Eliza, can you turn the fan on? I don't know if you guys oh, can hear yeah. as good with the fan on, but as it dries, that'll, that'll help it. Help it react. All right. And if you put it in the sun while it's drying, that helps it go really quick. My hands are getting tired. This is my sixth chair today. Did you show them the other chairs? No, but I don't like doing the camera. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you make any special holiday items during the holidays? Or do you stick to doing furniture? So. I will because we have a retail space and because we're doing a holiday market this weekend, I will make some holiday stuff. The, uh, the tier tree? Is that um, we're going to make, yeah, we did a tier tree, but that's not necessarily a holiday. Yeah, we're going to make ornaments for a Christmas tree. That's tomorrow. We're doing all the small items for the boutique. So in one day, we're going to make all the small items. And a lot of those are going to be ornaments. And then I have a few things that I pinned on Pinterest that he'll make to kind of decorate our, our space, but we don't do a ton. We mostly do furniture and then... And we have, the, we have the shop. If we don't get enough done, we'll pull stuff from the shop. Yeah, but we will do... We, we do a few, like, holiday type stuff. Yeah. I'm not a huge sign maker, We've so. opted to not do any signs. Yeah, well, we'll do some transfer stuff. Yeah, the transfers are different than signs. Yeah, we'll do some transfers, but we don't, we're not going to use signs. Um, I found these stars that I want him to make. So, I'm like, yeah. I can see myself in the camera screen. I'm like super tiny just peeking over the camera. Somebody platform. says, what, Andrea says, what's the trick to getting your YouTube live video so clear? We only tried two and they were terrible, so blurry. We're on Wi-Fi and we're using Jamie's iPhone 7. So we're recording with iPhone 7 and it has, well, it was a 7 plus. That makes a difference. I think it's a better camera yeah, it does than the 7. And then we have really good internet, so that, and we're, we're doing it in HD, right? Yeah, it'll end up being in HD once it processes. So that's, I don't know, we're, we're not really doing anything special. Am I, it, were you holding the camera or was it on a tripod? Because ours is on a tripod, that helps. What parts of the bed did we use for the bench? So we didn't have the rails, we used the headboard and the footboard, and then this piece, I don't know if you guys can see this piece right here. This looks like it's part of the bed, but Zeb actually cut this piece and routed the edge to mimic the original footboard base and the top. So if you guys want to see how it's built without the, the bench top on, yesterday's video I show all the underneath how it's put together and held and supported in yesterday's video. Uh, somebody said, I wish my husband would be interested in working with me. <laughs> Zeb used to sell tires and so he also would come home and work with me and when he wasn't super thrilled about that job and so he decided that he wanted to do this full time and we have a good time together. But Zeb's always been handy. His dad's handy and I come from like my, my dad's my dad built the mill milled this wood like from scratch. <laughs> yeah. And my Please. dad's a general contractor and my mom was over crafts at church for a million years. So we kind of were raised with parents that did everything. He's currently trying to figure out how to build a uh, five axis CNC for me which if he can get that going, I will be super excited. I would venture to, venture to say that most of these people don't even know what you just said. A CNC is basically I can put the pattern in the computer and it'll turn candlesticks or table legs or whatever. It'll do it for me. I just put the pattern in. Let's see. Um, she has a tripod at 7 Plus, but your internet isn't as good. Yeah, internet is important. Um, and we, I don't even know if I'm on Wi-Fi. I might be on my LTE. No, you're on Wi-Fi. I'm on Wi-Fi. Um, Internet is important because that's that's basically like your upload is what you're gonna see. Somebody so he says, "What's the weight? Like, how much does the table weigh?" I don't know. How much it's not weigh? bad. This table here, I'd say, is probably about 150 pounds. It's a lot the, lighter than the oak. The, yeah, the so. cedar is really light compared to like oak, and it's it's comparable to pine, so it doesn't, it doesn't weigh a terrible amount. And the legs are small; they're only three and a half inches. They're not. The it's legs. comparable to pine, but it's considered a hard wood. I'm not a hard wood, a specialty wood. Exotic. Exotic, that's the word. You know us, we're exotic people. All right, I'm going to bring you in for another close-up. A couple spots are starting to dry out on this, and I wanted to show you. Plus, I just want to get you closer so you can hear Jamie with the nail gun. Just. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
um, that table we just made, that oak one that I don't have a video yeah. for. So you can see it's starting to turn really good right here on this corner where it's drying out. These sides are drying out faster probably because it didn't pool up on the top. What editing program Deb uses? I what use Premiere Pro. Pro. I, <laughs> some of our first videos are kind of rough. I used Adobe Window or Movie Maker, not Adobe. Windows Movie Maker is what I started editing videos on because it was free and we didn't know if YouTube was going to be a thing we were going to do or if it was going to take off or what. So we were, that's we how were, we started. We were poor and we didn't want to spend a lot of money and we already bought the camera. It yep. was like $600 and I wasn't spending one more penny on it. So Most of our regular f videos are filmed um, with my, uh, I can't even, DSLR. It's a Canon Rebel SL1. But and I do a lot of filming with my iPhone 7 Plus. And yeah, the iPhone, the new iPhones film better than my super expensive DSLR, so. And I'm getting the um, X or whatever that's out, so that, we'll see. We'll let you know how that works. I just have to have time to go to, to like, get the X. That's the only reason I'm not. Or the iPhone 8. I haven't decided. I don't know. Can you still see on there? See on what? Uh, they're an inch and three quarters it's thick. Almost two and inches thick. Frame. And then how wide are each board? Um, so the outside boards are like 11 and a half and the middle one's eight. Ooh, got something on the top. Put a case on my phone. Yeah, I have a case. I use it sometimes. Well, we're going to have to whitewash now. Somebody I got some said, white on the top. Somebody said I came in late. What did you put on the tabletop? All that's on there right now is uh, steel wool and vinegar. We use that to stain it with and it's drying. We're weathering it. And because if you want to go back, the video will be uploaded later tonight, yeah, we'll and you can go back later. and watch it. Some people like the look of the red, but we're we do farmhouse style predominantly, and people don't really decorate with red tables. So when we got this cedar, I was like, "How? What the crap are we going to do with this?" So we did some research, and that's when we discovered that steel wool and vinegar was really the only way to get it to go from red to anything else because it will actually age the wood. If you try to stain cedar and make it, it not red, purpley. you get red brown. If you put gray on cedar, you get purple. <laughs> Somebody says, do I usually use a staple gun? I have a pneumatic nail gun, but hesitate using it. I don't know. And what is this, then? That's a, that's a Brad nailer. It does staples and nails. This is like a It's 18 piece. gauge. This is an 18 gauge Brad nailer that also does staples and it's com it's hooked to my air compressor. It's like $25 at Harbor Freight. Yeah, we have a, I mean, we have, we have a 60 gallon air compressor that's hooked to that you don't need one. That day. one actually will run off a little pot compressor. Yeah, but um, yeah, I used to use like a handheld one when I used to just do chairs and I think I may have even done a few of these style chairs with the backs on them. But this is so much better. There's no way. My hand would be dying if I was using it. She like used to use a regular hand nailer. For years she used it. And finally one day I got her to try it out and she'd never gone back. The only thing, I out. used to jam it a lot and not always. Mom, Eliza Jane, you are supposed to be in bed. Good night. <laughs> it is 9.30 and you have to get up at 7. Going to get some mom rage in the live video. Go. Oh, if I see your bottom again, you're going to be grounded. What do you want me to do with that? That's for me. And you're supposed to get it wet. <laughs> yeah. Obviously not all our kids are in bed by seven. Eliza's just Eliza's like, our one. She's our kid to push all the rules. She kind of does whatever she wants all the time. Somebody says orange screen and steel wool works awesome to get a reddish tint. The problem is we don't want a reddish tint. We want it gray. But it is turning gray very quickly. Somebody says, did I use my sander to distress the bench? Um, yes, yeah. but mostly I used my sander to get off the chippy paint because we painted it with chalk paint, but then I put milk paint, and milk paint chipped all on its own. I really wasn't planning on it being this chippy, but milk paint does its own thing. So the reason why it looks like old, aged, chippy wood is because I used milk paint. So it chipped on its own. 
My husband and I do what you do with lots of kiddos, but we're just getting started. Well, it's fun stuff. How many kids do you have, Shelly? Will I do a video on this bench? Well, I don't have any footage on it, but we are we are going to do a video on like how to make a headboard foot cord bench. We don't have another one exactly like this, but the concept They go together the same. Yeah, the concept's basically the same. If I can find another one, I will. Four kids. That's a lot of kids. We have five. We thought we were going to stop at four, and then we have Jack. Just for fun. I was like, oh, I want to be done having kids by the time I'm 30, and then I decided to have Jack at 31. He's worth it, though. He's pretty cute. And he's going to be super handy when he gets older because he's always oh, helping us. He gets depressed and sad if I don't let him help me in the garage. Yeah. He gets super sad about it. <laughs> and he knows what to do with all the tools. Eight, four, three, and 18 months. 18 months, I that is a hard age, I have to say. Like, they're, Jack, walk, they're walking, but they still touch everything. Yeah, they're touching <laughs> everything. They don't understand the rules. Jack is finally getting to that point where he's pretty low maintenance. He does like to get into stuff. Like the other day, Deb and I were gone, and he got into the Sharpie and drew all over everything. He drew all over some finished furniture. <laughs> Which, luckily, we know a guy that can fix he's that. He's 24, and he has six sons and four daughters. You've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't even know what to say to I that. I don't even know how you get that many kids that young, unless it's like yours, mine, and ours, or like I said, you've been busy. Which you know, whatever. Everybody has their own thing. We had four kids, but I think I was 28 when I had my fourth, and then Jackson. We could have had them sooner. I just was in no rush. All our kids are like three years apart, except for Eliza and The 18 Frederick. month old ripped off the molds off a piece you were working on today. That is rough. I would have to say that uh, Jack was so used to my furniture by the time he was that age. Sorry, I had to get in there and get that. He did. He probably hasn't touched furniture that was like that I'm working on since he was probably like one. He doesn't touch wet paint. He gets into everything else and trashes the whole house, but. The kid doesn't touch wet paint, so I guess I'll count my blessings. Right. Is that showing up in video? Can you see it start turning? That's kind of going gray How over do we here. Keep from getting paint all over the house. We don't. Well, there's paint. There's paint on the house. We're probably going to have to repaint the garage door and the front of the house a little bit. I mean, there's not a lot of paint, but there's probably a little bit. Here, I've been showing you guys the table. Let's see what Jamie's doing over here. So these chairs are pretty nice. They're already pre-set up. There was a groove right in here where you just put the staples and then Jamie goes back once she does it and trims close because she glues the trim over the top yeah, of that. Yeah, some people like cut it to, you know, cut their fabric. I just put it on there and they cut it off. Ain't nobody got time to cut a pattern. All right, where's my I don't know. You just had them in your hand. Is it, how's the table? Is it getting gray? Yeah, it's starting to turn. So we've got some spots right here that are starting to get a little darker and, and dry. It really, once it dries, you got to wait for it to dry and then it starts going pretty quick. <clears throat> you can see this side. This is probably closer to how it'll turn out right here, this corner right there is probably it might get a little darker than that but that's about what it's going to look like how long have we been going <laughs> oh yeah i'll show them i'll show them the chairs in the corner this is like the corner of shame over here whatever will fit those lamps are going to get forgotten and we'll end up moving things and be like oh those there those are so this is the llama chair and then she did a uh what is that called buffalo check um yes that is buffalo check. on that on that black one oh. that's how those turned out this is wicker underneath and we just put foam on uh, it had foam on there and we added a little bit of batting it's not wicker, it's well whatever that what, tan? i don't know it looks like wicker to me it's, it's made with reeds <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's not wicker, it's, I don't, whatever. It was broken, so just a Whatever it was, it's broken and now it's broken. Any new comments? Um, the lava chair is so cute. How much will we sell the bench and the table for? The table is $700, right? 
Yeah, that's what we're shooting. 695? Yeah. Because it's not very the wide. The bench will be between 365 and 395. It depends on how cute it is when it's staged. I don't know. I don't like to make decisions until I get everything set up and then I decide what I feel like it's worth. The cuteness of the booth depend is dependent on how it's much It's a rush seat. Things. That's exactly what it was. It was a rush seat and it was broken in a few spots and it looked like garbage, but still structurally sound. So we put batting and foam and then I upholstered it and I very neatly cut around the edges and folded it under. And then I put fabric underneath so you could see the raw edge so it's nice and neat and now it's an upholstered seat. Uh, Shelly's husband wants to know if we'll have videos about the CNC. If, Seb's down if we get it running, I will for sure do videos all day long about that thing because it's going to save my life. Somebody says, are you sure they're not tap chairs? I don't know what that means. Tap like tap dancing? Kim says the bench is pretty. Thank you. I love the bench. I know that some people will see it and be like, oh, it's so chippy. But I wanted it to look like it was painted 50 years ago and it's been sitting outside and chippy. And it, in real life, this bench totally does not look like I just painted it. And it doesn't look like I tried to make it look old. It just looks like it is old, which is the perfect kind of chippy. Tara says she wants the llama chair. Tara, you're not the only one. My neighbor across the street is one of my best friends. is like, I want it. And I'm like, I can't sell it to you because I put it on the event page. She already told people it would be Once there. I put it on the event page, I cannot sell it because people are She'll have people here. come to just buy that and then it won't be there. The fabric's from Hobby Lobby, so I can make another one maybe. Somebody <laughs> um, says they're in love with the fabric. All the fabric that I used is from Hobby Lobby. It's duck cloth. Dollars a yard, so with the coupon, it's like six bucks a yard. When I first started out, was it hard for me to part with my pieces? Nope, because I like money. So if that bench doesn't sell, she'll probably sell something else in the house, and we'll have that in the house for a while. We she'll make a spot for I it. I don't think we have anywhere we could put this. Like it's too wide for our entryway. Like there's nowhere. We could go for that instead of the couch. <laughs> yeah, that would really convince people. That's a really comfortable place. I mean, I guess we could put it in our bedroom. I don't so you know, I, um, I've never had a hard time selling stuff because there's always more furniture. I painted the whole base of this table. It's pretty good coverage. I'm not going to do any more because we're distressing it pretty heavy. And this was about half full on this sample. And is this a sample? This isn't a sample, is it? Somebody says, do you ever want? Uh, does any? Also, do you ever run into your family wanting everything at no cost? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> only, only my like my mom. We did her entire dining set once. I think that they, we were on vacation, and that's what I did. But I think that she gave us something for that. Like we built a table for his brother, and they paid us. Yeah. And Ty, my so my brother and sister in law, Ty and Mariah. Sometimes we do stuff for them, but they we do, do a ton. Stuff for them. They do a ton of stuff for us. Like Mariah cuts my hair, and Ty and Mariah will come up and visit, and they'll work the whole week. So. Mostly our family is really good about respecting our time and make, they know that this is how we make a living. And if we do things for them, it, it's, they do stuff for us. So it's kind of a, a two-way street. My niece Kaylin needed a chair upholstered and I just gave her a video and she upholstered it herself. And <laughs> so it came out great. And it turned out amazing. Your children come to shop your garage constantly. I, you know what? I'm sure my kids will once they get to that point. I have had a few times where my kids have said, can I please have this? And I've given it to them, like a piece of furniture or whatever. But for the most part, my kids don't care. My oldest boy says that he never wants to have a furniture. He doesn't like it. He's not been poor yet. <laughs> all of his little girlfriends follow me on Instagram and they like all my stuff. So he'll probably marry somebody that likes it. So you can see this, this is starting to show up all these little divots and things that I left in the wood. They're the darker spots, and this will continue. This is kind of pinkish still. It's still gonna, it's still gonna get darker. Somebody said, "What's the most expensive piece we've ever sold?" The um, table I just built. Yeah, we just did a three thousand dollar table. It was an oak table, but it was a custom order. But yeah, sold it. Um, and then somebody says, "Do we have any antique wood stoves to purchase?" Nope. No. That's not really something I buy. Jamie, Jamie passes them up because they're too heavy. They're heavy. It's not really my area of expertise. And for whatever reason, this corner is right, it's off to the races. It's 
it's going to go darker than everything else first. All right. Well, you guys can kind of see. You will. You'll see it at the show when we go live Friday. You'll see the finished table and how we ended up doing it. We're gonna seal it with polyacrylic once it's all dry and done. Done with the uh, process of turning gray. I don't even know what to call that. <laughs> once it's done weathering. All right. Well, if there's no more questions, we are going to take off for the night, guys. As soon as we tell them we're leaving, they're like, oh, wait, wait. Well, what time will we be going live Friday? I well, we have do... no idea. So we got to get there at the market. I have to tape off all the booths and measure all the booths out. And then people start showing up to set up at like 2. I'm hoping to be set up before everybody else gets there with our stuff so I'm not having to fight people. And usually we'll probably we'll go we'll live Friday night once everybody's set up, so that way you can see what's. There. Yeah, we'll take you a, once once most everyone's set up. We'll probably just go live at the venue and kind of show people what's there and what's available, and give people a sneak peek of everybody's booths. It'll be cool. Somebody also said, Tara says she needs to pick my brain. Tara, it's not a good week to pick my brain. My brain is shot. But maybe in the next couple weeks, I'll be sleeping more. <laughs> Probably not. Um, somebody says better house is covered in poly. It probably is, but it's probably very protected from the elements. Think of all those layers of polyacrylic protecting our house. And then somebody else said, my kitchen table set is solid oak with laminate top. Would decoupage it or just make a rustic farmhouse top? I'm just going to paint it. I don't know. I, painted tops are hard to keep, so as long as you don't mind, it'll chip off. Yeah, if you're okay with like the chippy look, painted tops are awesome. And somebody said, where do I source my pieces? Okay, this is the last question right now we're really leaving. Um, I source my pieces. People contact me and say, hey, I've got this. I also love Facebook Marketplace. is a really great place. I probably buy 50% of all things I buy are from Facebook Marketplace. And then everything else is just kind of random. So, all right. Bye, you guys. Have a good night. Over and out. We'll see you tomorrow. Maybe.